The next thing that we got to learn about is the assembly method. This is just the code that determines how we put this thing together. By default, there are three different methods types. We have merged meshes, which just takes them all and combines them into a single skeleton mesh. This is the best option for performance as it reduces the number of skeleton meshes and bones that are being rendered at any time. But it does have a number of limitations. One, you can't access any single particular part of the body, and as far as I've been able to tell, Blend shapes just don't work on this method at all. I would generally recommend this for background characters and NPCs. Next up are assigned meshes and segmented meshes. These work more or less the same way. There are a few differences though. One thing is that both of these will actually require an interface in order to work. So let's go ahead and add that in. Assembly character. There we go. Let's go down into interfaces and we have an options for assigned mesh components and create mesh components. Let's go to create mesh components first. So this is pretty simple to set up. Let's go ahead and say add skeletal mesh component. Let's plug that in. And that's all we got to do. So now, let's go back to this guy. Let's change this over to segmented meshes. And boom! Now he's working. And each one of these body parts, the head, torso, hands, and legs, they're all split into a different skeletal mesh. Now you can't access any of these from here because they're spawned onto the character. If you want to be able to access them from here, you can use assigned meshes. Assigned meshes just let you add a new skeletal mesh component right into the content browser and assign it to a specific body part. Now I've gone ahead and set this up using this map value. I've added in components for head, torso, hands, and legs, all of which can be accessed right from here. So now let's go back into the modular character generator and go to assigned meshes. And what? He's way off. Well, of course he is because all of these are way off as well. So let's just put him back to where they're supposed to go. This is the method you'll typically see in tutorials and stuff online, and it's mainly just included here, so you can do that if you want, but I've saved you a lot of time with actually putting the meshes together. I've talked a bit about assembly methods already, but one thing to note about them, and this will be new for previous users of assembly, is that these are no longer an enumeration, but rather something that you can set up yourself. So say you want to set up your own logic for how you want to put your character together. Well, you can do that. Let's just go ahead and create a new assembly method. Now in here, let's go into the functions, and you can customize how the modifiers are applied and how the assembly segments are created, which that's all we're going to do for right now. The important things to note here are the master mesh and the mesh segments. Note you'll always need to have a master mesh exported, otherwise assembly you simply will not work. So I think for this, I'm going to create a method similar to the segmented meshes method, but without having to go through this whole process. One nice thing about Unreal Engine 426 is that you can now add actor components onto a character outside of the actor itself. So what I'm going to do is take each one of my segments, create a new skeletal mesh for it, and then send it back out. So now I've gone ahead and created my own assembly method, and as you can see here, this will take each one of our segments, add a new skeletal mesh component for them, onto the character specifically. Then for each one of these, we'll get the master mesh, its relative transform, and spawn them at that point just to make sure they're all aligned properly. Then we'll get the skeletal mesh for each segment from the component, we'll assign that onto the skeletal mesh we want to use for this component, and then we'll add it to a list of output skeletons. And then when we're done, we'll send out the master skeleton and the output segments that we created right here. So let's go ahead and try and test it out. And my assembly method, boom, it works. He assembles properly.